Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Over the past few years at Synod Conventions, through my column in Canada Lutheran and in a variety of other ways, I have been sharing with you the fact that our church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, is facing serious challenges. Our membership numbers have been in decline since almost the inception of the church, and our financial giving towards the ministry of the wider church is also in decline. This has impacted our ability to live out our call to be a church in mission for others. To face these challenges, our church has been involved in a renewal process, spiritual renewal to help us deepen our discipleship and revitalize our church, and now structural renewal to help us be a church that is flexible, affordable, and sustainable as we live out our call to be in mission for others. The initial recommendations for structural renewal included significant changes to the structure of synods including the amalgamation of some synods. The synods have dealt with these matters in their last conventions. As we prepare for the 2013 National Convention, our focus turns to changes in the structure of the National Church. These changes are embedded in proposed amendments to the Constitution and administrative bylaws of this church. Let me share with you a few broad strokes about the proposed changes. First of all, you will see significant change to our Constitution. It has really slimmed down. We've adopted the proposal, or the principle, that the Constitution will only include who and what the ELCIC is. The how we do things has been moved to the administrative bylaws. The biggest substantive change to the Constitution is the creation of synodically recognized ministries which will allow people to hold membership in our church in worshiping communities that are smaller than congregations. I think this is a wonderful opportunity that will provide flexibility and also help us to grow our church. The other main changes are to the size and frequency of the National Convention, the size of National Church Council, and the composition and terms of the officers of the church. These changes are driven both by governance principles and by the need to save money. I hope that they will allow us to direct more resources towards mission and ministry. I urge you to read through the Structural Renewal Implementation Guide that outlines in more detail the proposed changes that are coming to our next National Convention. Read the attached amendments to the Constitution and Administrative Bylaws. Discuss them in your conferences, your clergy clusters, and in your congregation. Then, let us know what you are thinking. Finally, please join me in praying for our church, that God would lead us and guide us, that we would be strengthened for faithful discipleship and equipped for mission, both locally and around the world. May God bless you this day.